Hello, hello, hello everyone. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're having a good day. Well, this is what I'm working on. And uh, this is Hope and Love, Clara and Maud Pickernell, 1881. It's a Bristol Orphanage sampler by Hands Across the Sea. And I am right over here on the D. So I'm working my way across. This is my second go round at this video because um, I, I I did about twenty minutes and I I had made a boo boo and I could not figure it out where it was. No matter what I did, and I was just it it, it was just a disaster. So then I. I stopped the video and I'm starting all over again. So, today is the 29th of May, 2023. Right now it's at 11 o'clock in the morning. And it's a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny day here in Manitoba. Well, in our area. I think right down to Winnipeg for sure. And um, happy Memorial Day to uh, my American cousins. May you have a wonderful and blessed day. And to the people who live in Nova Scotia around Halifax, I hope you're all well. Um, I'm so sorry that you're going through with, uh, with dealing with this fire, this, these grass fires. I know there's been subdivisions that have been evacuated, um, you know, and ev everybody's on an evac order, and uh, it's just terrible. They can't get it contained as of the last time I saw it this morning, and I mean, it's just, it's just terrible. It's just awful. Those poor people there. Houses are burnt. You know. And it's just all over. I don't know how many hectares. But it's it's quite big. Quite, quite big. So. Yeah. So. This morning I had my counseling session from 9 to 10. And then I had started this first video and it tanked on me. So I think now I've got it. Now it was just a frustration. So sometimes it's better that you just, you know, um, just start all over. Ah, uh, see, I got another knot. That's the one thing about variegated thread for me is that it knots. It knots. It knots more than I think it should. So, yeah, I think it's supposed to get up, I don't know, 26, 27, maybe even 28 degrees. So we'll see. Okay, that's two, that's down here. And it's just... You know, doing one of these, these samplers, is actually easier than doing like a picture or something. Because all you have to worry about is that one little motif. So I'm working on a D. And so all I have to do is just work on this D and forget about the rest. No. 
Yes, 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 I got it. Ah. I could not figure it out. I had it done way down here and it just wasn't adding up. And I just couldn't figure it out. And it was right here at the very beginning. So. But that's the way it goes sometimes. But I could not see it. I just could not see it. It was just not showing itself. But I, I started this about a year ago, I guess. And I was sitting here and I was thinking, oh, gee, I'm kind of getting called to do this. I don't know how long I'll work on it. But I will work on it. And of course, starting on when... No, sorry. This Wednesday is our last for Flowering May. And next week on Wednesday is Counting June. So grab that pattern. You know, if you do count it, then perfect. You already know how. For those of you that can kind of do it... I recommend just something small. So maybe find something that you can do your initials. And just do it as a practice run. Right? So you do your initials. And if it doesn't turn out, you know, do it on a scrap piece of, uh, you know, um, Ada or linen, whatever count. And, yeah, just... Just, you know, like I'm not asking you to do a big heaven and earth design, right? I'm not asking you to do that. If you want to do that, that's fine. Or a big, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, long dog sampler. You know, like pandemic or something. I tried that. I could not get that. No way. It was too much. Like, my eye didn't have any place to rest. But this here, I know I can just work on this little uh, D. And, um, and just work on that. It is hard for me because I would normally have it up higher so I can see it better but yeah so Thank you all who joined me for the live yesterday. That was wonderful to see you. I'm going to do it again this coming Sunday. I think that that will be perfect. So there's three. Yeah, I'll be doing for three Sundays in June. No, two Sundays in June. The third Sunday is when Father Paul comes. So then I won't be doing it alive. Um, but I will be um, um, doing... Um, I'll be doing just a video that day. Oh. And that's because we're done at one o'clock. So, but, oh, I'm so glad I got this figured out. Itch, 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 itch. Oh, I was going to show you. This is the blue skirt that I got. 
from Timu. Very nice. And this is the top that I've got on. So it really goes well with this. It all oh, it fits perfectly. The two tops I have to really I gotta cut the arms down. They're just too long. Too too long. And they come way down, like way down to here. Nope. Not my style. I would find that so annoying. And it's not like I can fold it up. This type of material, you cannot fold up. So. Yeah. But I, I, I do like this. This is so nice and airy and very cool, you know. But I would recommend that, like my skirt here, this is um, a size 20, okay. Um, and I went down because of the style. I can go down one. I have one that is a 22 because I thought, okay, from China, it's going to be made smaller, right? But, nope. And, um, so then these other ones I've gone and, um, I got a size smaller. So that's what I would recommend for the tops. Get a size smaller. Because they make them, but you have to look at the picture, right? You got to look at the picture. And the thing is, what I don't understand is that they, you know, they, they make the larger sizes, but with the larger sizes, they make the arms too long. Because they think somehow, like, it's... It's like, I don't know, they think you're a gorilla or something. And you've got these long, long arms. So I have to cut them back. And then, um, do a, um, a little bit of a hem. And... Cut them down to size. And the one top I got there, I'm not really, I like these, you know, like almost like a t-shirt length here. I don't like, you know, shorter. I have big arms and I don't like it. I don't care for it. So. I know some people there, like, they like, oh, some like these spaghetti straps and everything. <laughs> nope. Nope. I don't think for... Uh, someone who is bigger and has bigger arms that spaghetti straps they they really don't it emphasizes your your upper arms or your arms in total what you should be doing is bringing the shoulders or the arms down the sleeves down it just looks more presentable and it does make your arms look smaller. It 
It's just like some of these people, they, they, like, they'll order a top like this, and they'll get it two sizes smaller than what they normally wear, and it's just like, you know, trying to stuff a sausage, and it looks terrible. It looks terrible. It really does. And you even get people like the Kardashians there. Just because you're slim does not mean that you should be wearing things that are skin tight. You know. Like I just. Nope. You know, I'm I'm always one for modesty. All right, I don't have to show off my chest or my cleavage. I don't. Why? Why would I want to do that? Why does anybody have to do that? You know. Like that's just. I don't know. We've lost all sense of, you know, respectability. And the thing is, is that women and young girls wonder why boys or men treat them like sexual objects. is because they... That's how they dress. You know, it's, uh, yeah, if you've got a nice body, great, you know, wonderful, but cover up. You don't have to, why do you have to be exposing yourself? You know, like I, I've seen it where, where women there, they have like an open right down past their bra line. It's all open and it's, no. I heard somewhere somebody had said, like they interviewed uh, girls who were dressing like that and they said oh yeah you know it's got to look good and got to attract the guys and everything else and the guys say oh yeah it looks nice and yeah sure you want them and all that but it's they would not want to take somebody like that home to show off to their parents because it's, you know, like there's, there's, you know, and I mean, I know guys dress like slobs and many don't shower and as much as they should. And, and that, like. No. That's just not. You know, and then you've got heavier set women like I am. Now, I'm not really big as compared to someone who's 250, 300 or even higher, you know, the best thing that you can do is to make sure you're clean, get into all those crevices and everything else, all those rolls, and, um, and then dress appropriately. 
dress like you're going kind of like um, to a wedding or like you are going for a doctor's appointment. I know there are slobs that go in there for doctor's appointments. I know that they don't care. They don't. It doesn't bother them. They don't wash their hair. They smell. They haven't changed their clothes in days. You know, like, if I know I'm going for a doctor's appointment, I always take a shower the night before. Always. It's just something that was, I think many of you are the same, right? It's like how our mothers used to tell us, I, I guess even for boys too, you should always change your underwear because you never know if you're going to get an ax into an accident and they have to take your pants off. <laughs> you want you want the tidy whities or pinks or whatever, right? So, and I don't understand these girls that wear these thongs. Oh my gosh. Butt floss. Absolute butt floss. <laughs> I remember one time I, I just for a lark I got one of these thongs and I wore it and oh my gosh all I was doing was picking at it trying to get it out of my butt <laughs> it was so funny it was so funny oh my gosh it was awful it didn't feel good. It just... No. No. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, bras, I don't mind. But I'm a fuller lady, so I like to be, you know, supported. And uh, I'm sure many of you are. Oh, the one thing I can't stand is... Uh, women who, you know, will go shopping or, you know, whatever, and don't wear a bra. That is just, ugh. That is, like, have some self-respect. Especially when you've got these women who have, you know, the really big breasts. And they are, um, you know, they're hanging almost down to their knees. Like, wear a bra. And if they say, oh, I can't get one to fit, well, then that's why you should go to, um, to some place where they will measure you for a bra. And you should get that that one done every, I don't know, five years or so. Because our breasts always change, right? So, okay, so there's my D. Finally, all done. Ah, gosh. Well, this E looks absolutely weird. This one looks weird, but I guess that's what it's supposed to be. These are just, you know, this is, young girls learned because they didn't go to school. So they were taught most of the times by their older brothers who went, um, who did go to school. And so how they learned their ABCs and all that were by stitching samplers. Okay. And um, so they would do, you know, their, their various alphabets. 
in, you know, whether it's Gothic style, Roman style, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, and they would learn their ABCs this way. Oh, gosh. There. I gotta take this out again. Let's go this way. So, I hope you will all join me there next week for counting June. And just find a small project. If you go on Pinterest, you can find a lot of free ones. If you go on to various websites, you can find free ones. You know, hands-on designs. Shannon Christine. Um... Oh, I don't know. There's got there's lots and lots. I think even modern folk embroidery has some. Um, there's some on uh, Long Dog Sampler. You know, um, Stitching with the Housewives have the occasional free one. And. Um, Yeah, so go to the library and check out a book on um, County Cross Stitch. You know, grab one of your magazines, your cross stitching magazines, because they will have lots of little ones. But pick something easy, especially if you're just starting out. Just get something really simple. You know, like me, I thought this was simple. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yesterday when I went for my bike ride, I was doing good. I did my round in like under 20 minutes. Because I stopped once and talked to um, these two ladies with two kids. Little ones, you know. And <clears throat> so I stopped for a brief moment and, and that. Um, but I wasn't out for very long. I wore a hat. I have my son hat. And within about, I don't know, half an hour or an hour... I started breaking out in hives on my face because of the heat. Usually I get it on my arms, but not on my face. But, uh, yeah, this time around I got it on my face, especially my right cheek. It got the worst. So I break in these lumpy bumpy it looks like mosquito bites you know that are enlarged doesn't itch or anything it's just yeah so okay everybody i guess that's it i'm gonna work on this hopefully i can get more than a d done <laughs> or an e <laughs> But I, I do like this one. I have other counted ones that I would like to get back to. I have a Carolyn Manning. I have my January from um, Stitching with the Housewives. I have um, Christmas Garden. I don't know if I've got any more. But, uh, yeah. So... I want to uh, try and, you know, I'll try and uh, 
work on those ones too. But I, I'm just going to take it however I feel. This one was just calling me, so I thought, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So. So anyways, okay, please remember to like, share, subscribe, comment. That helps my channel grow. Click the notification bell. And you'll be notified whenever I put a, a post a video. Um, yeah, there's the dedicated Facebook group, Stitching in the Interlake. You need to answer the question, who are one of my three sidekicks? I usually mention them every video. So, like, Jonah's up in the cat condo. Lily Bell is laying there in front of the sofa. And Sydney is on... Lily Bell's bed. He gets on there and he just becomes like a dish rag. Absolutely like he's dead and he just, you know, he will not do anything. He won't do anything. He just lays there, becomes dead weight. <laughs> um, there's also my dedicated email address, which is stitching in the interlake, all one word, at gmail.com. All right, everybody, I hope you have a great Memorial Day. Stay safe in Halifax and Alberta and B.C. If you're dealing with all the fires up there in Cross Lake, Manitoba, they've also got a big forest fire. Everybody stay safe. Absolutely. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be well. May God bless you this day and every day. God loves you and so do I. And so does Lily Bell and Sydney and Jonah. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me from my sins. Thank you for being there in my darkest and deepest moments. Thank you for loving me like you do. Thank you for caring enough for me that you would see that my sins would be forgiven. And that's a prayer I pray for all of you as well. All right, everybody, have a great day. Um, I'm not sure about tomorrow. I, I think because I'm going with Juliet at about 9 o'clock. So, and I won't be back until about noon. So, if I can, I will do it this afternoon and then just post it in the morning. We'll see. We shall see. All right, everybody, have a great day. Toodle-oodles, everybody.